Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with veteran Canadian jazz trumpeter Brad Turner. He talked about his newest offering, his 2019 CD called Jump Up. With his talented quartet, it's another great album. He talked about this and a little bit more. So get to know him and get to know this new project. So Brad, thanks for taking a minute out for Neon Jazz today. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. And every time I see your name on a project, I'm always ecstatic because I know that CD is going to stay in my chamber for a long time. Huh, okay, cool, man. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. I just, I, there's just certain CDs that I, I instantly get. I'm like, oh, man, Brad's got a new album out. Let's go. And got in the car and went. So <laughs> I, I, cool. I did what the album I says. I jumped up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give me an idea of what the artistic vision for this project was. Well, I mean, I've known these guys since forever. And uh, Seamus has been a friend of all of ours in the band since we were well, all pretty young and uh, sort of starting out. Corey, we, like 20 years ago, we did a record with the same lineup. It was pretty much sort of seat of the pants productions 20 years ago. And, uh, you know, we recorded it, live gig, the whole thing. And um, the idea was that if it, if it turned out upon, you know, listening to it later, if it turned out that it had worked and we were happy with it, we were going to put it out. And, uh, you know, no big deal. Um, turns out that it worked and we put it out and it was quite popular um at least you know locally it was a record that i ended up being quite proud of and um was a bit of a statement it turned out that way it wasn't that way you know planned that way at the get-go it just <laughs> it turned out that way um so anyway flash forward 20 years and Corey, i given that was there some sort of anniversary for the label or I know I don't know if that was it or not. I'm thinking of something else. Anyway, it was just his idea that maybe we revisit the project. I think it was just that it was twenty years later basically. Twenty year anniversary of that recording. And Corey threw the idea out to me, you know, would we like to do another another uh hit with that band? Because Seamus was in town. He comes home every Christmas to visit his folks because they live up here and uh so yeah, of course I said yes, and then I set to uh, writing the music for it. This is about nine months in, or eight months in advance of the recording, something like that, but I got the word. So I, I worked on the tunes quite a bit and um, went through a number of batches of music. Usually for a record like this, I'll write about 10 tunes. So I think for this one, I wrote more close to 25 tunes. Before Seamus had got up there, we sort of, we crashed through them on different, different gigs and sort of came to a consensus on which ones worked the best. Seamus showed up and like he always does, he just shows up and plays the music as if he'd been playing it for the last 20 years. <laughs> um, yeah. made it sound amazing. And, uh, you know, the, the rest is, well, I guess as they say, history. We, we, we did, uh, three nights. At the at the uh, jazz club in Vancouver, Frankie's, and then we went in the studio on the fourth day. I had a bit of a decision to make in terms of whether or not the record was going to be a live record or a studio record, or what combination of those two things you know might be successful. I came to the conclusion that including one live track at the very end would probably be the best way to go because the studio stuff turned out quite good. So anyway, that's sort of the, the the whole the whole thing in a nutshell. Corey Weeds was the idea guy, and with the funding and the label and all the promotion and all that good stuff. And you know, on the other end, I I just basically write the tunes and we show up and play them. But this group of this group of tunes, I was quite pleased with because I um I actually really you know I'm such a fan of well of all these guys that I've played with for so long. But uh, to speak of Seamus specifically, I've always been a huge admirer of his his abilities and specifically his his ability when it comes to playing a melody. I mean, everyone knows him for being, you know, a technical virtuoso and, uh, you know, a saxophone master. But, and I know him that way too. But I, I also, as a composer, appreciate how he can play a melodic line and how he plays a phrase. And so when I was putting this music together for us to play, I, I had that in mind because, you know, I've got every every album he's ever done and uh, of course and I'm pretty familiar with his playing so sort of trying to write music that might gently go in directions that I've heard him go um that that I've always enjoyed you know it's nothing new in terms of being a composer you know writing music specifically with certain musicians in mind but uh in this case it was pretty easy because like all four of these guys 
you know, I've known for a long time. And, and it, yeah, it was just kind of, uh, it all just came together really nicely. I was pleased with the end result. So why was it called Jump Up? Just because that tune, the second tune is called Jump Up, and that tune is called Jump Up. Because that little motif keeps going, bum, 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 <laughs> jump up, oh, yeah. jump up. And, uh, you know, of all the, the tune titles, often when you're coming up with a title for a record, at least a jazz record, I don't know about pop records, but, you know, um, one title from one tune will, will pop out at you, and Corey really liked that one. He he thought that that was a good name for the record, and uh, I had no better suggestion, so we went with Jump Up. Nice. So what do you want the listener that buys this album to get from it? What do you want the resounding feeling to be after they listen to this over okay. and over? First of all, I just I just humbly hope that they would enjoy the, the playing and maybe, you know, for the for the art and jazz fan out there there might be some players. I'm sure everybody knows who Seamus is, but you know, the rest of us, you know, we're we're up here in Vancouver and um we don't get out much, <laughs> you know, but, but uh, we might not be as familiar to jazz fans. So Bruno's playing particularly on, on this record. I mean, I think everyone's performance is really great. And I, I highlight Bruno Huberis as being a bit of a breakout performance. He's a wonderful jazz piano player and he's a, he's a true original. I just, I just think that folks might enjoy and get a kick out of his playing. The other thing is that um, when I wrote this, I really tried to write a whole album that uh, told a bit of a story. So I'm sitting here in the park, and uh, the play school kids are going by right now. <laughs> oh, it's good. I like it. Yeah, there's about 60 of them, and they're all looking at me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, when I put this music together and did the record, I wanted it to be a record that if somebody w- wanted to, would sit down and listen to the whole thing in, in one sitting because it, it, it's a bit of a musical journey and the way that the tunes are written. kind of like a big old house and each one of the tunes is an interesting room in that house and they're all different but they, they all go together and I want everyone to, when they listen to it, to think of it that way. It's a, it's a story, the whole thing. I think nowadays that a lot of younger listeners anyway, the way that people listen to music these days tends to be a little bit more parsed out, you know, a track from here and a track from there and and that can be excellent. You know, you can cover a lot of ground that way. And and uh, I'm speaking specifically about the students that I teach at the university up here where I teach. You know, even even the jazz students, their method of listening oftentimes doesn't involve, unless they're prodded to do it, to, to sitting down and listening to a whole album beginning to end. And so I wanted to put together a record that was interesting that way. And uh, you might feel at the end of it like you've gone on a bit of a jury, journey uh, if, if, you can, if you can give up the, the hour and a few minutes or whatever it is long uh, to, to do that. So, so those two things, you know, Bruno's playing and, of course, Seamus and, uh, and just the arc of the whole record compositionally from top to bottom. Right on. Man, Brad, hey, thanks again for another great album. Thank you for taking some time to open up about this project. I really appreciate it. Sure, man. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Canada, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Brad for his time, his music, and his cool. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Jazz.